Yes. Thank you, Reverend Sanders, for a great summer relationship with the Lord. And also for the wildfires in California and Colorado. Um, pray for me. I have a long work week this week. I just pray it goes smoothly and I have patience, understanding, and make it easy. Let's <laughs> make it easy, God. You want wisdom. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Her niece and her niece's son, Miriam Williams. Miriam, uh huh. It's his brother. Okay. Okay. Her niece and nephew, sorry. Any other prayer requests? All right, well, let's go to the Lord, believing that all these prayers are going to be answered. Father, in your name, Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord, right now. Right now, touch Iona right now, Lord Jesus, Lord. Protect her, Lord. Lord, 
as a soul, I can leave the school. <laughs> and now, any other testimonies? Um, so last week, I last week I applied to get a fourth job, Boy. and I got a call back. <laughs> I got a call back saying like, "Hey, you know, we want to schedule you for an interview. Want to be like able to?" So I go ahead and uh, schedule my interview. The only time they had open, was, like open with my other work schedule was Sunday at four. So I'm like, okay, that's, you know, that's perfect. Give me enough time to go to church and then um, it will be afterwards. So I headed to the job afterwards and I go up to them. Um, I was like, maybe, you know, 10 minutes early. I'm just letting them know, like, hey, uh, you know, my name is Serena. I'm here for my interview. And before I get to that part, I, before I get to that part, I missed the part saying, um, I'm not afraid to get this job. I didn't pray around God, like, even if I should, just was like, hmm, fourth job, I can do three, let's do four. Mm -hmm. So, um, I didn't pray about it, and it's funny because right after that, like, I, that thought came in my head before even getting the interview, like, I didn't even pray, I didn't even really ask God, like, if I could have this job, but also in the past, God has given me every job that I have tried for. So I was like, I guess I'll find out. So, my bad forward, Ooh, back to the nice. interview. Um... I go up there, I'm like, hey, my name is Karen, I have an interview, you know, today for, and they're like, we've never heard of you, um, they can't find my interview, they can't find my application, they can't find anything, like, wow. nobody set up a time, I was like, somebody called me, specifically called me, set up a time, we even had a little, like, you know, side conversation they do about, you know, my jobs now, like, just nobody's heard of me, and so they're like, yeah, just, no, like, we're not even hiring right now, so I don't know who called you. It was just, it was bizarre, but it really wasn't bizarre, because obviously it was God, like, first of all, I didn't pray about it, second of all, like, as soon as you probably can just slow down and just sit down somewhere. And that's what I was told, so. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Any other testimonies? I just want to thank God for being such a wonderful provider. Yes. And I've yes. just been a wonderful provider for one uh, work companion. Yes. And, uh, and those companions, but also a wonderful husband. Praise God. Yeah. Glory. Amen. Praise God. Glory. Any other testimonies? Okay, go ahead, sis. I, 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 I also agree with her. I thank God for being a provider. Um, many of you probably know that uh, my cousin was murdered last week. Oh, no. And so he didn't have any insurance. And everything basically falls on my mom because she's like the, the next person in, you know, in the family. His mom is deceased, you know, and aunties and uncles, you know, they all had strokes. And my mom is the next person that would handle the business. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting on my mom's porch and I'm just praying. I'm talking to God. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to sell no dinners. You know, because yeah. he didn't have any insurance, uh -huh. was, and you know, and I'm like, and ain't nobody got no thousand dollars to sit, you know, to the side, you know. So I'm like, I'm talking to God. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to sell no dinners, you know. I said, I want you to take care of it. I asked the Lord to take care of it, and I shared this with the women's uh, ministry earlier um, in prayer. But it was like an hour later, somebody called and donated every single dime that we needed. Wow. Hey, hey, Come down to the reception, I mean, not the reception, but the repass. I mean, everything was taken oh, care of. Yeah. We didn't have to sell not one dinner. Yeah. And I thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> because God truly knew my heart and He answered me, He answered just like that. Yeah. When you line yeah. yourself up in the will of God and you do what and he'll answer just like that. It, it didn't take no time. Amen. They called us like, we got it. We take care of the whole thing. I'm like, I just thank you, Lord. Yeah. I just pray. Just, um, I had to piggyback on Trina. Um, just this past weekend, the middle of last week, I have these neighbors that rent. 
And they have, since they've been there, they have been a burden to me. I'm hearing them at three and four in the morning, so I'm waking up and I can't get back to sleep. Um, they have a kid that's very destructive. Um, there's all kinds of people coming in and out, and to make the last straw, I was out on my deck and I smelled marijuana. And so I called them over. I saw them passing by. I called them over. Listen, could you come here? Okay. I don't want to go out one more time and smell marijuana, or I police and it's probably going to be me. And uh, I said, so let's fix that. So he went, he said, okay. I, he went back in the house. I guess he had a discussion with the rest of the folks. And no problem. That's no sweat off me. So um, finally I started praying. I said, Lord, now you've done this for me before. I own this place. They rent their place. They have to go. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to deal with them anymore. Mm -hmm. Please move them. Mm -hmm. That Saturday, uh -huh. <laughs> they had a U-Haul. Uh -huh. I think I prayed that prayer on the Thursday. Uh -huh. That Saturday night, there was a U-Haul, and they were moving. <laughs> when I walked up, I said, oh, I said, um, hi, how are you? What's going on? And he says, um, uh, the little kid, he's about 14, mm -hmm. he says, we're moving. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, you be blessed where you go. <laughs> and, um, and then, of course, uh, the, the adult came out, and I said, well, I understand you're moving. I said, I pray that you're blessed on your next journey. He said, well, thank you. And I said, oh, yeah. And I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Right. All we have to do is petition our worries, our concerns, and he will handle it. Yes. All we have to just trust that he's going to do it. Yes. And he'll do it quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yes. Yes. Let's get into the word then. Father, in your name, Jesus, Lord, I just thank you. I glorify you, Lord. I lift your name up, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, I ask that I decrease and that you increase, Lord, and that your word, Lord, ever resonate with us, God. Lord, that we be not just hearers, Lord, but we be doers, Lord, and that we bring forth the fruit that you desire, God. Lord, we thank you and we glorify you and we lift your name on high. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about, take just a little bit of time and talk about um, encouraging the body. And, and um, uh, this is something that um, I, I've kind of taught on a little bit before, but there's, more, there's a little bit more depth into it, what God wants us to understand about it. And, and as saints, we don't always have nice things to say to one another. We don't always encourage each other the way that God wants us to encourage each other. And, and we're, we're often focused on the issues of somebody else than focusing on the strength in somebody. We're not focused on the right thing all the time uh, uh, or, or how they aren't living right or how we don't agree with something that they may have said or they've done. Next thing you know, we're in a situation where we're starting to gossip about them and we start to talk bad about them. And we didn't even know this, but we're now tearing down the body. We're actually hurting the body, not, not helping it. And God is looking for us to encourage one another. He's looking for us to be saints that are going to build up the body. He's looking for us to, uh, 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 us to support the body and support one another and, and each one of us to, so that way we can grow through prayer and words of encouragement. God wants us to be like him in all things. This means that we have to love each other like God loves. Um, this, this is difficult for us from time, from time to time because well, we know that we're not God. But it's in our human nature to fight what is right. Um, 
But with his spirit, we're able to overcome this. You see, this means that we have to see the saints the way that God sees them. And, and we all know this passage of scripture that when we go through it and we read it, and, and a lot of us probably can uh, uh, recite it, you know, frontwards and backwards. But Jeremiah 29, 11 through 12, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expectant end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. This means that because God thinks of us with thoughts of peace and not of evil, that, that means that God would not have us to think evil, that he would uh, uh, or, or think evil uh, about others or even to speak evil to, uh, uh, because if we are speaking evil of someone, then how can you say that you're thinking like God? See, God only has thoughts of peace towards us. Now, that's a wonderful and beautiful, uh, beautiful words that Jeremiah wrote. But this meaning is way, way more powerful than that. It's, it, it basically means an intention or plan or a purpose that when you when you look at the word thoughts, it means intention or a plan or a purpose, because that is what it means in the scripture, that God knows the intention, the plan and the purpose for you uh, for your entire life. So this means that God knows the plans of our life and he thinks on the intention and the plan and the purpose of our existence. And he also talks about this, that that he gives us shalom, that he gives us peace. And, and it's not just peace, but it, it, it means that he gives us safety, well-being, uh, 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 friendship, uh, welfare, health, prosperity. Peace is another one, but he's a, a, a great, a good health. All of these things, uh, 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 welfare, all of them, he, it, holy, rest, safety, all of these things that God gives us. So God not only thinks of his, the, uh, his plan for us or our purpose for him, or our purpose in his will, he's, he's also doing this, that he's thinking about our safety, our well-being, your happiness, your friendship, your wealth, your prosperity, your peace. See, God is only focused on these things in your life. So what we should be doing as saints, as a body, is thinking of the same thing for each other. We should be focused on other people's plans. There's no, that means that there is no space to think or even speak evil of someone. See, he, he, you should be so focused on what God is telling you to do, to say about somebody else, to encourage them, that you're not thinking about how messy they are, how, how, how they did you wrong, how they did this one wrong. You should be thinking about how they're going to prosper in Christ. That's the thing that you should be looking at. You should be thinking about their welfare, their, 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 their friendship, their safety, their well-being, because that's what God thinks about with us. <laughs> see and this is the part that I love is that when you do these things when you call upon the Lord he's going to answer you that's what it says in verse 12 he's going to hear you he's going to make sure that I hear when you cry out to me see a lot of times we get in a situation where we're worried about something or we're doing something and we know that or we're talking about somebody and we're praying and it means nothing because you sitting there talk bad about your, but, uh, your brother and sister in Christ. Well, you just talking bad about yourself. And God can't answer your prayer. He can't hear you when you're talking all that foolishness. Because you keep worrying about them and you're not worried about, uh, 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 you, you keep worrying about the negative things in them. Let me say that. Not the positive things, the things that you want to make sure that is leading them and guiding them in the right direction. See, we should be praying for them. We should be in a situation when we see something that's wrong, we can tell them, no, brother and sister, I want to let you know that, no, that wasn't quite right. That what happened. I hope this doesn't offend you. But I'm doing this out of love. I want to make sure that you're prosperous in the Lord. I want to make sure that you're wealthy in the Lord. I want to make sure that you're safe in the Lord. I want to make sure that you're happy in the Lord. I want to make sure that you have a good relationship with the Lord. 
Because I'm encouraging you. I'm not damaging you. I want the body to be okay. I want the body to be functioning right. You know, uh, 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 <laughs> God is perfect in all things that he does. But we're a part of his body. So sometimes we make God eat some things that's not good by our behavior. We spoil his stomach. We're sitting on the toilet too long. With the mess and the things that we do with one another. Yeah. See, God is trying to get us past that. We've grown, right? We should have grown. That. We should have matured. You should have matured last week. If you didn't last week, I don't know what's wrong with you. Amen. So there's no space to think evil or speak evil. See, God is thinking of you and he wants us to, to uh, and he wants to answer us, but we have to do his will. See, this is what we should be thinking about with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are called to be the body and they are uh, uh, and they're, if they're in the body, then they should be thinking of, uh, 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 of the same thing that we're thinking of. Could you imagine if everybody's thinking of this same thing? We're all thinking about how we're going to make sure that one another is growing together, that we're thinking of their prosperity instead of hating on each other. Could you imagine the devils that you're going to conquer? Could you imagine the, the, the families that are going to be restored? The healing that's going to occur? The miracles that God wants to perform? See, God wants to make sure that, that when you see somebody that's struggling, hurting, not doing well, sick, lonely, broke, agitated, irritable, upset, perturbed, flustered, ruffled, discon disconcerned, unnerved, unstrong, disquieted, disturbed, uh, uh, distressed, unsettled, that you don't talk bad about them, but you begin to pray for them. That you see what's going on and that you want to speak encouragement. You speak life into them. Yeah. You know how many times that we start speaking death into people? Because we're tired of de dealing with the same situation over and over again. Tired of seeing them fall back and forth. Well, God doesn't see that with us. And we thank God that he didn't. I thank God that he's still correcting me. I thank God that I still have an opportunity to make sure that I can get this right. That when I see something about somebody else that I can no longer worry about, be worried about well, how they're doing this wrong or how they're saying that or how they're living like this. That if I know that they're hurting, I want to make sure that I have the source to make sure to heal them. No, I have the ointment for your healing. I have the oil that you're looking for. I don't care if you are a, 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 a saint that's been in this since uh, 1942. Or if you're a saint that's been in this last week. I want to make sure that I have the same thoughts that God has about you. That you prosper in the, will that, the way that God wants you to prosper. See, we have an obligation to think like God thinks. See, I want to be more focused on your plan for God than I want to be focused in my own life. Because if I'm more focused on your plan and encourage you to do something, then I'm not going to be worried about my stresses. I'm not going to be worried about my foolishness, the thing that's going on in my life. I'm going to be focused on my brother and sister growing and making sure that they get the help that they need, that they are going to actually meet the potential that God wants you to meet. See, I, 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 I'm not looking at your circumstances. I'm looking at how God can and will turn it around for you. See, you should be encouraging them and reminding them that God knows the plan for you. That he knows the purpose and that they are going to be healed, that they are going to be prosperous, and that they are going to have perfect peace in him. This means that you are going to have peace without fault or flaws. See, uh, we know this, that we're the church. He, he, wants, he cleansed us up, made us pure before him that we don't have a blemish upon us. If you're walking in the way that God wants you to be, 
See, we are, we are the body of God. We are the body of Christ. And we have to help remind them of the same thing. Because, you know, sometimes you forget. We're forgetful people. And young saints most definitely forget. But I want to tell you this. I shouldn't say just young saints. Because we got some old saints that keep saying the same thing over and over again, time and time after again. That you're complaining about the same stuff that you complained about 10 years ago. But don't get irritated with them. Don't get frustrated with them. Don't get flustered, disturbed, or anything like that. You should get to a place and say, you know what? I know the plan God has for you. I, I, maybe you forgot. Maybe you maybe I need to help you to help remind you of what God thinks about you. I, maybe I need to help let you understand the testimonies that God brought you from, how God healed you from this place, how God uh, elevated you at this spot and how he did like this. I need to make sure that I'm speaking life into you. Because obviously you are bothered by something, you are disturbed by something, and I want to make sure that you're walking in this peace, this shalom that God has for you. Amen. See, God has made us one body. He has given us to, uh, to one another. And we are the same body. We are Christ. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And edify one another, even as, as also ye do. See, Paul was saying here that we need to comfort ourselves as the body. This, is, this word comfort means to give exhortation to, to, uh, to cause someone to be encouraged or consoled, um, either by verbally or, or nonverbal which means to encourage, to console, to encouragement, uh, encouragement. So he's telling you, you need to encourage somebody. You need to encourage your brother and sister in Christ. You need to encourage the body. You need to encourage yourself. Now, you know that you are, uh, 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 you, we are the body. So if I'm talking about the body of Christ, we need to encourage ourselves in Christ. So I know that you are my brother. I know you are my sister. So I'm going to encourage you to make sure that I'm lifting you up. That I'm bringing you to a place of encouragement. That if you're hurt, I'm, I'm also dealing with your, uh, I'm consoling you. I'm helping. See, I'm not speaking words to hurt you. You know that song, what is it, I need you? Yeah, yeah, that with word from my mouth. We, how, how many times we sang that? How many times you lied and sang that? That's what I really want to say. Because when you go home and when you start talking about somebody or you start thinking this one did this to me or did that, you lied. You've been harming them with words from your mouth. But that's not encouraging. That's not consoling one another. See, he's looking for us uh, 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 to lift each other up. To encourage each other. He says here that we should, we should not only encourage each other and lift each other up, but we should edify one another. This means to build up, especially increase the potential of someone or something with focus on the process involved to strengthen, to make more able to build up. So what I'm saying, what Paul is saying, what, he, uh, what, what we're saying together that's right, that's right, co-laborers, that you should find somebody to build up. That's right. You need to strengthen somebody. That's right. If you're tearing somebody down or doing something that's not of God, then you understand you are outside of the body. Amen. You're not doing what God called you to do. Amen. God wants to make sure that you're lifting each other up. You can't say that you're, you, you, you self-mutilate. That's not what Jesus is doing here. He's healing. He is lifting people up. He is encouraging you. I want to find somebody. I want to find somebody like, like, like this. We know this, that God will make a jewel out of nothing. See, we want to find some jewels. 
We want to start making sure that they start looking good, that their life, everything that's going on, that it was one thing. And now, next thing you know, they're prosperous in everything that they're doing because that's what God does. He takes those small things and makes them big. As long as we stay humble, he will continue to uplift you. See, I, 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 I want to find the potential in you. I want to strengthen you. I want to make sure that you're strong. I want to make sure that you're living according to the word of God, that you're following the plan that God has for you. Because if you do that, then I know you're going to do that for somebody else. And the body can continue to grow stronger, that the body can continue to be encouraged, that we can see people getting built up. See, that they're more able to do the work and the will of the father. That's what I want. I want us all to be able to be in a situation to do the things that God wants us to do. See, uh, uh, you have to ask yourself, when is the last time that I saw one of my brothers and sisters in Christ that were down or dealing with something and I built them up? That, it, 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 that I increased their potential with the sole purpose to strengthen them. See, I'm not talking about those that you feel comfortable with, or even better yet, those that you ha are real comfortable with. When's the last time you've encouraged them? See, God wants to make sure that we're building each other up. See, uh, God told me this about a sister uh, in Christ a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the sisters in Christ here was dealing with, uh, uh, I don't know what you say, uh, a family issue. And it was sitting right here in front of everybody. It wasn't obvious. But she has uh, two teenage sons. And, the, you know, uh, the boys obviously didn't want to be here. They didn't want to sit here. They didn't want to listen to the word of God. They, didn't want to do, they were mad that mama brought me here. Okay? And they were planning on, I'm going to sit next to each other. Well, the mama knew, y'all not sitting next to each other. That, that ain't happening. And uh, you know what she did? They were sitting right, one was sitting here, and the other was sitting there, and there was one of those chairs like that, and she sat on the boy's lap. <laughs> she sat on the boy's lap, did not move. No, mm-mm. We're not doing this. No, you look silly. I'm sitting on your lap. I don't care. And this is what God had me tell her. Sis, your dedication and love for God is so powerful right now. Don't stop. You keep persevering. I know that this is difficult. I know when your kids start acting crazy and they want to act out in public too. I want to make I want to let you know I'm strengthening you, sis. No, you are so strong already. But if there's anything that you need, don't hesitate to call me. Because in my mind, I kept thinking, where are the ushers? We just let people sit on each other's lap now. What is happening? I don't get that. You know what ended up happening? The boy moved. He submitted. Asha. See, sometimes we just need to make sure that we keep pressing, that we keep doing what God calls us to do. And when that, when that happens, you're going to realize God is moving out things out the way. So you should be encouraged, saints. That if you're having trouble with your children, that if you just stay focused, if you just keep going on, if you just keep pressing, that God is going to build you up. It has to move. It has to obey. When God sets order, it has to happen. And when you submit to it, you know God wants to do it for you. You know, Bishop gives this uh, 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 analogy quite a bit. He gets quite a bit of analogies, but this one for sure. Uh, it's been 27 years worth of analogies, so we got quite a bit of them. But he talks about how if you're a kid and you, you, your kid tells you, decides one day, no, mama, I just want to clean the whole entire house. It's not going to be like you're going to be like, what? No, don't do that. Don't do that. No, 
you are going to be elated. So when God tells you, when you, when, when you tell God, God, I just want to obey you. God is elated. He's waiting for you to do that. He's going to find a way to keep that going in your life. See, God is, God, uh, God is trying to strengthen us. He's trying to get us to be in a place where we're strengthening each other. He wants us to be strong, and, but we have, the, uh, we have members of the body, of his body, that's weakening right now. And all we need to do is build each other up. He is trying to encourage his body. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 18 says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See, we have to look to comfort each other. We, we need to look to build each other up and stop hurting each other. You, you, you know, there's a problem with you if you are always saying something negative, you always have something negative to say about somebody. Right. See, God had to heal me of that. I would, I would always be like, yeah, that was good, or that was okay, but, or I think it could have been a little bit better, like, God had to check me on that. He told me, he said, what if I did that to you? Oh, no, I know, you repented, but you're going you're gonna to fall again in a month. Th that doesn't mean anything. You, you, no, 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 you, 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 that was a great offering there, but... That doesn't mean anything. You should have did it like this. God said, if, you, if I told you that, you'd be damaged. So stop saying that. Stop living like that. Give over to me. No, God says, I edify you, son. No, I take the little steps that you take, and I already know, because remember, I know your plans. I already know what's about to happen, but I take those little steps that, that you take and I encourage you. I build you up. I motivate you to keep going stronger. So we need to do the same thing with other saints. See, uh, he, he wants us to do the same. Romans 14 and 19 says, let us therefore follow after these things which make for peace and things wherewith we, we may, one may edify another. See, God is looking for us to follow those things that make for peace and to edify each other. We need to start lifting up each other uh, in the body and we need to be different than the world. Because, you know, the world hates us because we're with him. That's what it says in John 15 and 18 through 19. It says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before be, hated me before it hated you. If you were not of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. So if we're hating each other, then we're not doing no better than what the world does with us. We're acting just like the world. But we're not of this world. We shouldn't hate anybody. We should be like Christ. We should be doing the things that God says for us to do. I'm speaking encouragement to you. See, we can't hate each other. Because that's a great offense to God. Uh, uh, that is the reason why the world hates Christ is because he is not of this world. And if you are hating on the body, then you are acting as if you are not of the body. See, uh, God wants us to be more like him and to live like him. In order for us to do this, we need to start lifting each other up. We need to be stay focused on the positive things that we see in our fellow saints. We need to be uh, uh, saying things uh, 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 of adoration to each other, lifting each other up, making sure that they know how we feel. Not just saying, oh no, they know how we feel. And when God speaks to you, you need to do that. Because that's really important. You have no clue what encouragement may happen. You have no clue what somebody may be going through. They may be the greatest actor in the world. But once you say that one thing, whatever it is that God has you to say, you might be floating. It might break some chains. It might make you believe better. You don't know what it is, but whatever it does, it's going to, the whole sole purpose is to get you stronger. It's going to get you to be built up. Uh, it, it, uh, Paul knew how to do that with the saints very well. Uh, Ephesians 1, 15 through 18, it says, 
Wherefore I also, after I heard of your, of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention you in my prayers that the, the, God of, uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and uh, what the riches of his glory uh, inheritance in the saints. Praise the Lord. See, Paul was encouraging the, the church and, and, and he says that he heard their faith in the Lord and love uh, unto all the saints. Then he goes on to say that he will not cease to give thanks un for them. When's the last time you could say that? You said that about well, another saint. Well, I, I can't cease to stop thanking God for you. I guess not very often because it's mighty quiet. But I can tell you this. When God showed me that, I just started thanking God for each and every one of people that I knew. When God revealed that to me years ago, that no, this is how you build up the body. That I thank God for you, Sister Perthidia. I thank God for you, Sister Alexis. I thank God for you, Brother uh, uh, Shaitwan, Brother James, Brother James. Two Jameses over there. No, because I want to make sure. Oh, my gosh. I thank God for you, Deacon Moten and Tamir. I want to make sure. I want to make sure that I, I give a shout out to them, Okay. Let me tell you what these fools did. No, nope, it's too late. You know, you, no, no, oh, no, I want to get it. It wasn't in the nose, but you got it anyway. No, I'm just kidding. But no, seriously, I mean, really, I really thank God for you all. I truly, truly do. Minister Yates, Pastor Keisha, Brother Oliver, I, I thank God for all of you. I truly do, because all of us are a part of the body. All of us are joint heirs together to grow, to get stronger. Yes, I thank God for you too, sisters, the twins. I thank God for y'all. <laughs> but truly, because that's what we're about. That's what our mind should be at. See, you, you have to get to a certain level of spirituality to understand this. You have to get to a certain amount of understanding that, no, I don't care what somebody may have said or somebody may have done or anything like that. I am only focused on your good. I'm only thinking about the better benefit for you. I don't care. My feelings mean nothing to me. Because I'm a part of you. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you be lifted up. I love you. I care for you. Because remember, God, that's the thoughts that God thinks about us. He never stops thinking these things about us. Even when we know we don't even think that about us. Even when we know we shouldn't, de we don't deserve that. Even though we know we are no good. God never stops thinking of us like that. God wants us to be the body that he called us to be. And this means that we have to encourage one another. We have to thank God for each other. The thing about this is, is that if we start thanking God for each other all of the time, then we'll have less time to start focusing on ourselves and our own issues. You see, uh, what, what it means here is that, uh, that after he says that he's going to pray, pray and cease not thinking, uh, th uh, thinking of them, thanking God for them or thinking of them. He says that his prayer is that God may give you give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened and that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I don't know about you, but that's an extremely encouraging prayer. I, I, I want that prayer. I'm going to be a little selfish now. I want y'all to start praying for me like that. You know what I'm saying? And I pray that we do. 
because I want to have spiritual wisdom. I want to have that revelation in God's eyes and understanding. I want those things, and I want those things for you. Amen. See, once you recognize those things, then there's going to be a lot of mess that's healed. Once you start talking to God like that, when you have that spiritual wisdom and understanding, there's going to be things you'll be like, why was I tripping on that? That's crazy. I don't need to live like that. That's, pfft, I'm done with that. Amen. No, God, thank you for that revelation. See, uh, I, 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 I want to be enlightened. A lot of folks don't want to be enlightened. They don't want to know. But God wants you to know. See, God wants us to be encouraging to one another and, and, and the body can get stronger and grow. And that way we can be the same of the same mind and go further in Christ. Uh, Colossians 1, 9 through 12, it says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God, strengthening with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of inheritance of the saints in light. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. See, Paul was continuing to encourage the body as they were growing, and he would tell them how they could continue in Christ and so they could be the body that God wanted them to be. He didn't talk bad about them. He did correct them quite a bit. But he also took the time to encourage them. See, he, 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 and he wasn't stuck on the same thing. But one of the things that he did say was, is that, I, I, I'm still thanking God for you and I'm not ceasing my prayer for you that I want you to grow further in Christ. This is this is what God wants for us all, that we all want to grow like this. We all want to be strong in God like this. We need to stop talking crazy to each other and causing self-inflicted wounds. And when we start talking about each other, we're like someone that is cutting themselves just to feel the pain. We need to stop hurting ourselves and start edifying ourselves. We need to start building each other up. He is looking for us to speak encouragement to the body. He's looking for us to, to build up the body. He knows that uh, what will happen when we truly start building each other up and no longer start, uh, start, uh, stop hating on each other. That the body will actually grow. That the church will grow. That's what happened in, in, in Acts 9 and 31. It says... Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and were edified, and were walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. See, they were built up walking in the fear of the Lord, in fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and were multiplied. God wants us to multiply. He wants us to truly be fruitful. He is looking for the church to grow. He's tired of these self-inflicted wounds, and he wants us to make sure that we're truly healing and we're operating the way that God wants us to be. Not just the church, but the whole entire body of Christ, which should be our main focus. Father, in your name, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we glorify you right now, Lord. Lord, I ask that you encourage every saint right now, Lord. Lord, I thank God for them right now, Lord. Lord, I ask, Lord, right now, Lord, that their spiritual wisdom, Lord, grow, Lord. Lord, that, they're, they're, that everything that you want and desire for them, Lord, Lord, that they operate in your shalom, God. Lord, that they operate in your peace, Jesus, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. Lord, we speak peace unto this place, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just touch all those, Lord, right now, Lord, that are having trouble receiving it, Lord, right now, wherever they may be, Lord. Lord, touch them right now in your name, Jesus, God. Uplift them right now, Jesus. Lord, we don't want to continue to hinder your growth, Jesus. Lord, we surrender to you right now, God. Change our minds, change our hearts, Lord. Let us forever, Lord, operate in your will, God. 
Lord, we thank you and we glorify you. We lift your mighty name on high. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory. I told him.